it, it's psychological warfare. Just like when they started death education in 1990, within three years, every school that did it had a tripling in suicides, even 2020. ABC News did a special on it. I covered it at the time, in 95, when they actually had the piece about what happened in, in the years after it was adopted. It taught the kids how to commit suicide. The D.A.R.E. program teaches you how to use drugs. And the truth is, five-year-olds aren't thinking they're a girl. Six-year-olds aren't learning normally about oral sex. That's what's taught now. And it's sick. It's teachers and a school with a curriculum, not just telling your kids what to eat and that parents can't pack lunches now all over the country and that you can't have dodgeball or whatever because it's competitive and hateful, but that you know Bobby has two daddies or Heather has two mommies. I mean, this is being forced with people sexualizing our children, and it's pedophilia. Now, briefly, we have struck the best deal ever that we can offer our listeners and it supports the broadcast as well. My Patriot Supply, we have their full line of products, their best discounts at InfoWarsStore.com, and their whole line is there. We have copied their whole line through their factories and private labeled at InfoWars Select. And we're going to be putting together even more complex, special diet stuff, you name it, under Info or Select soon. But under this huge selection, high quality, you can get the lowest prices ever by a huge margin they've offered. But Info or Select can only offer these prices that are even lower than the actual you know, distributor sells anybody else for for two weeks. So now's the time to get your storable food with all this craziness going on. It supports the broadcast. It's a win-win. InfoWars Select at InfoWarsSelect.com. That's just a subdomain of InfoWarsStore.com. That will take you right there. Or call. You can answer all your questions. 888-253-3139. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can call and order. 888-253-3139. 13 days and counting as it started yesterday, and then it'll go to the lowest price of whatever they're offering. We can match it. So, it, but, but this is, I twisted their arm. They wouldn't do this for a couple of years. I twisted their arm. They wanted me to private label. I twisted the arm. I got you this deal. Infowarsstore.com. Infowarslife.com has got a bunch of products back in. Natural herbs that healthy, uh, get you to be able to sleep, knock out, blows away the competition. The same cost is just one of the ingredients. If you bought it separately in a bottle like melatonin uh, or some of the other things, L-tryptophan, uh, valerian root, and still six other ingredients. Infowarslife.com. And we've got the deep cleanse, natural herbs to cleanse the body, an amazing formula. That's back in. Uh, we just sold out of the liver cleanse, unfortunately. X2, super male vitality, all of it natural the way God intended it. Okay, going back to Chuck Baldwin of Chuck Baldwin Live. Get into Romans 13, please, sir, and then speak to what you think we're being conquered by. Obviously, it's the devil, but my faith has always been strong, but now it's so strong, Chuck, because you can see this isn't of this world. I describe it, if I was a science fiction writer, of how an alien force would infiltrate and end a species. You end the family, you confuse the sexuality. I mean, Texas A&M has helped come up with stuff to eradicate the fire ant, eradicate um, you know, uh, different types of maggots that get into beef uh, by attacking their sexuality with pheromones, with chemicals that confuse the sexes. This is how, if I was aliens, I'd take out the planet. You look at what the globalists are doing. It is a takedown of humanity. How can the idiot Obama supporters not get that their that, that their health care prices have, have gone up? How can they not get that black unemployment's doubled? How can they not get they're being preyed upon by he that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Well, and how can the pastors and churches not get that they, their obedience and submission is due to Christ, not the state, not Caesar? I think that a lot of our pastors and churches today are, are saying, in essence, what the Pharisees said 2,000 years ago when they said, we have no king but Caesar. And that's exactly the way they're acting. Because of the 501c3 issue, they're scared to death that they might lose their tax-exempt status, and therefore they're afraid to deal with any of the issues that are confronting their, their churches and their communities, which has basically neutered the churches and the pastors. They've become completely mute on these issues. 
Think about it, Alex. We've got over 300,000 evangelical churches in America today. Think what would happen if just half of them or a quarter of them would stand up in their pulpits and strongly take a stand on these issues. Think about what would have happened in Kentucky if the pastors and churches had stood up. That situation there would have never taken place. This is being done because of the lack of courage and involvement of the pastors and churches in America. We have no one to blame but, but us. And the reason for this is largely the Romans 13 misinterpretation. This thing has been propagandized for the last 75 to 100 years to the point that it's now a part of the psyche of the Christian community. They don't even think about it. They just accept it carte blanche. And this is one of the most perverse teachings of Scripture that I know anything about. But the whole Bible is people not submitting to tyranny. I mean, if you took out every example of the Bible, of people, men and women, who deliberately disobeyed the higher power, the civil government, based upon a moral uh, conviction under God, you would eliminate... You'd get rid of Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. <laughs> the book of Daniel, the entire book of Judges. You, uh, go through the, the book of Acts. Go through the Old Testament. Time after time, you see disobedience, willful disobedience to government, because there is a higher law than the civil law. There is a moral law. I mean, that's what Nuremberg was all about at the end of World War II. You know, the Nazi leaders tried to justify their action and said, look, we were just obeying orders. We shouldn't be held accountable for the atrocities we committed. We're just obeying orders. And, of course, the Nuremberg judges said, no, there is a moral law that's higher than the laws of men. And that's true. And it's true for all ages, all times, all people, all nations. It's true in our country today. So why are the churches and the pastors teaching their people to become good little servants, good little slaves of the state? Because they're not churches. Well, they have become government corporations. And the pastors are CEOs. And the deacons and the trustees are corporate officers. They truly are. When they signed the bottom line and they joined voluntarily that 501c3 uh, status of the IRS, they became a government corporation and the officers became government officers. It's corporate officers. So therefore, they're acting in accordance with that. They're not prophets. They're not watchmen on the wall. They're not speaking. They're not Paul other. Revere. They are state run. Exactly. They're, they are state-run. They're, they're state-controlled, and they know it. And that's the thing about it is that the third rail out there, it's an invisible rail, but they know it's there, and they refuse to touch it for fearing that the influential members of the, of the congregation, the sure. people that are giving a lot of money, well, they might not be inspired to give if there's a threat to the, five, to, you know, to the nonprofit state. And let me throw this in there, that's Pastor, because right. I want your expert take on this. The last six months, you could see the hammer dropped by the collectivists. The takeover is on. And suddenly, I got some family that goes to Methodist churches and, and, and kind of Baptist churches and stuff, and I go to some of them. Man, it's like hearing Mao say tongue or something. The new pope openly calling world government, saying abortion's okay. I mean, it is on. They are really showing their hand. Why do you think that's happening? Well, I think it's happening because it's, it's, the, it's now the politically correct thing to do. And unfortunately, the, the, the thing that's motivating most of these church leaders is success, quote-unquote. And I'm taking that word not because that's what I'm saying, but because of George Barna's research a few months ago documented this brilliantly. The average church leader in America is motivated by success. Success means bigger crowds in, in the audience, bigger offerings, more programs, more staff members, and larger square footage of building. That's what success means, according to Barna's research, in the average church. So it's not about preaching the word. It's not about standing for truth. It's not about preparing. But it's not success if you've just got some government-run social club with a cross hanging on the wall. Exactly. And in, in Nazi Germany, and if you've ever read Hitler's Cross, a tremendous book, you see the photographs of the Nazi flags in the auditoriums of the churches of Germany, and sewn right in the center of the Nazi flag was the Christian cross. I mean, that's how integrated the church had become to the state. You talk about separation of church and state. We don't have it. We have the state that is taking over the church. The church is nothing but a mouthpiece for the state. I know, and, and I talk to liberals, and they go, separation of church and state. That doesn't mean the government runs the churches. It's just so inverted. It's absolutely inverted. And, and the result is the loss of freedom. 
Not only that, we don't understand natural law anymore. You can't even get Christian pastors to, to give you any kind of an explanation. We say, ask, can you give me just a, a, a brief summary of natural law? They can't do it. You say, where is natural law in the Bible? They can't do it. Well, Chuck, they, I was criticized over the years as a libertarian you know, Christian for not being more upset about the homosexual lobby. But I've just got to say, now you, I can really see that it is what people said. I mean, it is a takeover. And it's just so weird to see weird socialist, communist, and homosexual groups allied to bring down Christianity with radical Islam, which would cut their throat in a minute. And, and the feminist groups have nothing to say about radical Islam and all the horrible things they do. These are really just sick, evil people uh, that are controlling all of this. I mean, they really are, at the end of the day, their hunger to attack real Christians and to take us over and our children really shows they're animated by the spirit of the devil. Yeah, what are Christian parents going to do now? I mean, look, this, this term just started up around the country. They're going back to a transgender curriculum in, in, the, in the schools. They're going into transgender bathrooms in the schools. I mean, where are the Christian parents on this? Are They'll they submit. really going to allow their kids to be subjected to this five days a week in the public schools? If we should ever be thinking about homeschooling, it is now. If, it, if we should ever but be thinking But is it not about pedophilia to come in and make education about sex with little kids? I mean, this is perverted. At one time, it would have been considered a crime it, 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 in the United States. It would have been considered a crime contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's exactly what it Well, we always wondered how NAMBLA would get in. We know the U.N. wants to legalize it all, and these judges have been calling in Europe for legalizing it. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the day's coming where a 20-year-old or 50-year-old knocks on your door and wants to date your 7-year-old, and if you don't do it, you'll go to jail. Well, you know, what, what is, what's going to be next? I mean, you know, Judge Roberts predicted in his dissent to the Supreme Court decision in June that this was going to sedge into polygamy very quickly. Where do, where do we go from there? Yeah, how do you say no to people that want to marry five women? Well, and, and how do you say no to people that want to marry minors? I mean, let's uh, we we can see the age of consent that's going to be going down to accommodate people who want to marry minors. Yeah, because that's their preference. I mean, you don't want to be bigoted. Where where is it going to end? Once you like you said at the beginning of this hour in in your monologue, Alex, when a society gives itself over, and we're not saying that there's you know there's always been immorality. In society, we understand that we're not we're not trying to play God. We're not trying to go in people's bedrooms. And I'm the last one that promotes that kind of stuff. I mean, people that accuse Chuck Baldwin. No, they're coming of, into of our houses for private morality. They don't know me. I don't do that, Alex. I don't. But when a society itself, as a whole, when it gives itself over to moral indecency and perversion and a reprobate mind. There's not a country, a nation, an empire in world history that has ever survived once it has done that. That's right. Storm strikes Mecca in Medina, Saudi Arabia, 65 dead after crane collapse. And I wonder, looking at Mecca, will they put transgendered bathrooms in there? See, nobody asks... Saudi Arabia to take the refugees caused by the wars they've been starting. It's just sick how they guilt us, the West, that's so open-minded into submitting to all this craziness. Chuck Baldwin, there is an awakening happening to this. And I think the establishment's smoking a lot of its own dope. I want to go to some phone calls in this segment and the next. There's a whole other hour coming up, fourth hour with Rob Dew uh, and others and David Knight and uh, you name it hosting. But, but, but Chuck Baldwin... How does the left work with radical Islam that would slit their throat in a minute? I guess that just shows the true hate is of Christianity and freedom. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that the secularists in general have a disdain against Christianity and Christian principles. And I do believe that there is a correlation there. And I think that that the fact that America was founded by Christian men largely, mostly, and that the, the fundamental tenets of our Bill of Rights and, and the principles of our Constitution, and especially our Declaration of Independence, are all founded and framed on Christian principles 
and on biblical principles and natural law principles.